Hands his ankle there, nice, big nice left kick. He comes Jordan, Jordan back. come back with those hands again. Hey, yo, it's your boys back on the interwebs. Uh, Even I made an appearance this week. Yay! Applause. <laughs> <laughs> I know, how good of me. <laughs> it's like, it's like we're, not, we're not physically with each other for me, but the yeah. next best thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's raining again. Yeah, fuck, isn't it? It's meant to be like the rest of the week. It's been well. a complicated couple of weeks. Mm, I bet, I bet. <laughs> How have you been traveling anyway, mate? Let's been look. good. I've been busy. I've been very busy. Obviously, my favorite thing to do is... It takes a lot for me to not do the podcast. Like, I, I don't know. I don't bail on a lot of them, but it <laughs> been uh, a lot to... Uh, I don't know. I think um, as I get... I've been thinking a lot about it. Of course, I'm fighting next week, if anyone was done. Uh-huh. Just, to, just to keep... Keep the listeners in the know if you're unaware. Um, every fight camp I find like uh, I've been thinking about a lot um, this time around. Like things change a lot as you get a bit older. Um, maybe I'm feeling a, a bit reflective because I uh, I turned 25 the other week. Um, when I was a kid, I always thought 25 was the age like you were a grown up. Um, you know, like everything was kind of like. <laughs> you know uh, a young adult but like I saw when someone when I was like well if someone was 25 like I was like yo that guy's like my parents age um so like now that I'm 25 and and I'm a, I'm an adult by my own childhood standards maybe I'm just feeling reflective but like <laughs> the whole fight camp thing it's like becomes uh much more of a to manage you know like i mean like the point that i'm making is i now think back to when i was like 16 to 21 and like you take for granted like just being able to do whatever you want all the time you know like when i was getting all i did for like i mean it's not that different now but like all i did in those years was just like train and like chill and think about training and wait for train again and like it's like i said schedule wise it's not that different i do more hours now than i did then it's just like all of the other things that i have to do in my life are like more uh uh what's the word i'm looking for uh you know they're like uh, more a- a- attached to them um I, you know i can't just like drop everything whenever i want like i can't imagine like fair play to anyone who like has children and stuff and like real responsibilities and has to fight because like for me it's like just having a job and having to remember to eat is enough to be like geez this shit's busy <laughs> <laughs> well it's, isn't it it's just I think it's like, like you said, like <clears throat> the older you get, yeah, yeah, you do. You get more attached to like just different stuff outside of like, yeah. like um, your recreational things, which is like for, for someone like uh, <clears throat> yourself in particular, like fighting, it's a pretty fucking big thing, you know, still, but uh, all the other little pieces have to work in with it. And you know, like I gain more respect for the people who uh, have, have walked this road before me, the more I do it, you know, because in Muay Thai, uh as all muay thai fighters know like it is a, a balancing act to it's like in a job outside of everything else that you've got to do you know like uh, i talk to people you know superiors to me in my non i mean like people always don't realize that like <laughs> I actually have a job. Like when I talk to people that like, oh, I'm doing this for work, they kind of just like, oh, I just assumed you sat around and <laughs> watched Muay Thai all day, which would be, look, there was probably, especially when I was a uni student, there's parts of my life where that was not that far from the truth, but like um, everything moves a little bit quicker um, in the, the outside of the gym life, which is good because you got, you know, it's nice to be able to grocery shop and stuff outside of your my career. Um, but yeah, like the people I've seen a lot of people, you see this as well. Like when I was coming up, a lot of the people who were at that early stage of their career were a bit older than me. Like I'm one of the lucky ones who 
got in the swing of it quite young and you'd see people get to this point where they're like, oh, I can't do, I can't focus on fighting you. I've got to do this other stuff. And at the time you're always like, pussy. But like <laughs> when you get a little bit older and you see how much sacrifice is actually involved in, in laying that path, um, you can't understand <laughs> these people with that reach for I feel like you you reach a point I think in your kind of 20s where like you get to a fork in the road where it's like all right if I'm going to do this I got to really do it um and I've got to make decisions in my life that are purely to with what I'm doing with work and maybe where and I'm living and stuff like that that are everything in your life is kind of geared towards supporting your fighting um and like a lot of people just kind of go I can't do it I can't justify it um and like you don't really understand where they're coming from when you when you're like 16 17 and you're just living it you're kind of like okay whatever what on earth <laughs> well it's like i guess now like I don't know, how long have you been fighting for now this is what i've been thinking about as well it's like seven or eight years now and that's like that's since i you know like i when i was you know back in the 70s when i started it, it was we didn't have the same system that we have now right like it was a little bit more difficult to it was a bit underground right like we used to just like show up to other people's gyms and chuck our sparring gear on so like that was all happening god that'd be almost a decade ago now like the the sparring day yeah thing i i was fighting on you know, like real amateur shows yes yeah, seven seven years ago now eight years ago now it's time flies time flies eh? oh. yeah. yeah yeah it's crazy though right like <laughs> i still feel like i just started well i was about to, I I was about to say like, like um that. you can look yourself like well, when we get past another eight years doing this podcast still, <laughs> we, can, we can look back and go, like, uh, how, how would that would look in the future? Like, what would have changed then? Like, still fighting, but like, uh, yeah, it's, just, it's getting harder now, you know, <laughs> to get up in the morning. Yeah, man. And run. Yeah, but it's like the same thing. Like, I remember thinking it was hard when I was doing my HSE. Mm. You know, it was like, and, and again, like, not to, uh, you know, if you're doing your HSE and you, trying to fight I understand it's hard it's hard then um but like i'm gonna look back on this time when i got more shit going on and be like it wasn't hard then you know? <laughs> <laughs> so like i can already hear one listening to this that has a child and he's yeah. trying to train and fight fuck you man <laughs> exactly and i completely get it i completely get it like every time i'm in like a professional environment and someone's like oh i got to do my job and pick my kid up from school i'm like i cannot even fathom it like <laughs> i would not be able to so fair play anyone like feel free to gut check me like send me an instagram message and be like no no <laughs> you, you don't have to. i mean like i don't know but it's the same thing like fighting's not easy uh preparing to fight's not easy it's not advertised as easy if you think it's easy you I just in the wrong game it's hard for everyone at every stage of your life that you're at it's just like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it gets busy it gets busy trying to but i mean for me it's like i have to sometimes i get really really so talking one of my friends uh training the other day about just like how fucking lucky i get sometimes like just like sometimes with the whole fight camp thing you just feel like you never have a second to just just chill and just not have anything going on and like part of that's my fault um, because I'm not good at having nothing to do. I think when you get used to being really busy, you kind of try to seek out like every little gap in time is time that should be spent doing something. Um, and I just get like so cranky sometimes and I just feel like, I, you know, the weekend disappears and now you back to the, the kind of, early 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 mornings and, and often quite late nights as well but then like when i'm i get a little bit of sleep and i i you know i'm like a small child i i have a nap and i'm like i it's not so bad i'm like i'm in the position that i am because i do shit that i really like doing all the time and like, like you sacrifice things 
absolutely but like i wouldn't trade it either like i'm always i'm i'm always taking on too much and that's something i'm learning a little bit more about as there is more on my plate and and it's like back at that period of time that we talk about when you can do whatever you want um you have like there's more room on your plate you know like you got you can take on more and more and i think now becoming a little bit older and having a few more responsibilities you have to have the maturity to understand when you don't have the bandwidth to do something else um and that's like you've got to learn to say no to certain things and and figure out the opportunity cost of spending your time on doing something but um i when i have to check myself i have to just be like it's a good thing to be stupid doing things that you really like like making this podcast and talking to different people and commentating fight shows and training and teaching and like everything that you get to do like you got to remember that you have the opportunity to do it and like i think uh lockdown was a good gut check on that because it all went away at once and i didn't like it <laughs> you know what i mean like i didn't i didn't want the free time that i had so uh, yeah that's uh just just a little little tangent to kick off today things have been busy busy <laughs> but um cool like it's also cool like there's a lot on in my time now and i want to be involved in all of it mm-hmm. from the officiating to the commentating to the you know and if i get the chance i'll just go to a show and spectate but that doesn't happen that often anymore nah definitely not but but it's good at the moment yeah there seems to be a lot of ghost shows going on it's like getting amongst it we can guys definitely like um so like while we're still on that kind of tangent from there like you are you are fighting it's very soon next week i am six days six days so yeah so it's back on so we'll we'll do a little bit of review on that card we're not gonna review all of it from there but like um but like let's let's talk about your fight so you're having a rematch against jamie allen from ptj this is uh this is for the wmc state title um Yeah, the, the first fight in particular was, was a good back and forth battle. That one, which which you uh, came out on top on, um, second time going around. <clears throat> how you reckon? Mm. How you reckon everything's been feeling? How how's, how you reckon it's going to pan out? Uh, look, I mean, it's good. Obviously, I'm going to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's my prediction. <laughs> um, <laughs> I. Yeah, but I don't know, like, I, I'll still, uh, you know, still lend my, my a- analytical eye to as a podcast host. Uh, I, I don't know what, like, it's not like I, I came into that fight the first time around. I felt with, like, a pretty good understanding of some of Jamie's tendencies and, and his style. I've seen Jamie fight a lot. Um he's been around a long time he's an experienced campaigner and with that you can you can come in with a pretty good understanding obviously professional fighters at a high level are changing all the time but like you can understand archetypes i i had a plan um i feel i executed that plan quite well perfectly there are ways for me to refine that and and go after it a little bit better but i, I know jamie's a, a smart a smart ID operator. So he'll, and, and his trainer, Andrew's very smart. Um, so I think he'll come in with some change. I mean, like, look, he come, he's not coming here to lose. He doesn't want to beat him twice. So he's, he's going to try to build upon that idea. So I'm open. I'm going to see how he kind of approaches things differently. I think, uh, yeah, you know, like I have a pretty good idea of what I need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand fully that I'm not preparing for the same fighter. And I know, like, I know what it is to go in there to fight someone who's beaten you before. So I'm expecting him to be hungry and, and to want to, you know, like he was hungry last time, but he's had five rounds to get a feel for me. And I know there's things he can see. I have to be, I have to be uh, on top of the idea that, you know, when you, someone's got five, someone of Jamie's level's got five worth of data. That's something for them to build upon. But I have the same, mm. you know, so um, 
I, I'm confident. I know what to do. I'm expecting a hard fight, but I'm expecting a really good fight. I like the style of match. I like fighting guys of this level. Um, I know there's a lot I could have done last time that I didn't do. There's a lot of things that I could see and, and uh, things we can talk about after fight. Uh, I'll give you a different perspective, but some things are... Um, you know, a lot's changed in how I'm preparing for fights since the last one. So I think uh, if you're expecting me to come out the same, um, you're underestimating me. Uh, I'm doing a lot really, really differently. And, and like, I think you can kind of see if you mentioned in, in my last fight, uh, there have been some some pretty big stylistic changes. So I think I've got, I've got some to bring out in this. So... Let's see. I'm ready. I'm ready for a good fight. I'm ready to. I really like Siam to Sydney. Uh, I'm ready to. I think it's a great show for a real Muay Thai audience, and I'm. Um, I'm really want to perform. And yeah, let's just see. That's it. Let's just see. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm ready for. I'm ready for a different Jamie. Uh, I hope he's ready for a different me because. Mm -hmm. i don't know you can't that's the thing i feel like this a lot like people think they know i've been around a lot um but i've been learning on the job people kind of think they i don't know people people think that the book's written on you quickly in combat sports i really feel i've just been i like i've been growing up in in on the scene uh and that's why like yeah i've had like a number of fights now, but I've always been active, always been very, very active. And like you said earlier, I still feel like I just started. Everything is changing for me. And now the rate of change is, is absolutely accelerated compared to how it was in the past. So things are changing a lot. I'm, I'm ready to show something, something a bit different in this fight. So get the ticket. Yeah, definitely. It's um, so going from that last fight, like I, I don't think Jamie's fought since then, but, you're Jamie will be fighting me back to back. back to I back. have one. But yeah, you had, you had a bit of time to get on the Rebellion show when they were kind of like, yeah. saw, saw that bit of new style. So look at the on from that and, and like, yeah, and like uh, further improve all the stuff that you've been working on. Aaron. And that's it. Like I showed some flashes of what I'm um, building towards in that Rebellion fight, but I'm a slow ass learner. So like it's time for me to like it was not you know i don't know all i'm saying to the spectators is don't let one fight give you an idea of a comprehensive idea of anything that i've implemented because these things take time to really did do a bit of a stylistic overhaul in the to that rebellion fight and it takes more than one fight to put these things in and, and i'm excited i started to show I fought Jamie a year ago. I've developed a lot in that year and, and a rematch is the perfect way to show how much I've improved because, and just the differences that I made, but, you know, Jamie, you know, he's, he's a, 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 a tough operator. He's got a tidy style. He's not looking to let me get away with going two nil. So I'm expecting a, I don't know. I have my ideas, but let's see. Yeah. Show me what you got, Jamie. Exactly. It should be a banger. And yeah, then... a big one. I actually really like Jamie. Yeah, Jamie's cool. Really <laughs> <laughs> well, good let's see. <laughs> yeah, I know he he was thinking maybe he should have got the nod in the last fight. Um, don't think so. But, uh, <laughs> hey, let's. Well, uh, he's got a second time to prove it. You now. won't be. Yeah, let's say, yeah, and I know that's his mentality. I like that. I want people that I, I've always felt like I do my best work when someone is mm. out there to push me to my limits, and you've got to go there. That's what I'm planning for here. Yeah, I'm for the hardest fight of my life. Um, I hope he gives that to me, and, and I will come back over the bridge with a win. Nice. And a shiny new belt. <laughs> to go yeah, with. let's do that. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, we got also the, the, I think uh, this fight's, this is the headline fight or is this just co-main event? Doesn't, I can't remember anyway, but it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I know it's kind of like a 
Look, I, I, I like the poster though. The poster's all right. <laughs> poster's cool. Yeah, the poster is cool. <laughs> um, and what likes to see, um, to Sydney is cool because we got a couple of these now, like an entire pro lineup. Yes. There was a really long time in New South Wales when you didn't get those. Mm. Like you got, you know, every show was like one fight. Well, not every show, but most of the shows that were like pro had one or two pros at the top and the rest was amateurs. Um, this has a full professional lineup of like good and well made fights. And it's good that now, you know, we had 1774 last month had an entire pro lineup. Um, down to Sydney's going to have a whole pro lineup and next month, Yokel. Yeah. I assume we'll also okay. have a whole pro. So it's good. Like we're seeing a much more frequency of like fashion supported by amateurs on the under course, but you still get an entire pro lineup. I think it's sick and it's more opportunities, more yeah. opportunities for our pros um, and more opportunities to start mixing in with other interstaters. Cause once you start getting the lineups, you've got a call. Other guys in it's it's uh New South Wales uh, becoming a real has become I wouldn't say become he has become a real player mm-hmm. for professional Muay Thai shows, which is sick. Yeah, that's great. This is it's definitely tell like the the scene down here is going this is in the right direction. Just trying the motion. I like this line. I like this line. If I wasn't on it, I would yeah, give it a walk. I would, would purchase the ticket. <laughs> 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 so the, the other fight we have on here is for the featherweight side the city title. We have Abu Sali, Ibi versus uh, Tuck. Um, so Ibi from PTJ, uh, Tuck from yeah. PC. Uh, yeah, and it's like, it's I've, like, you know, I always like, liked Ibi for I've been on many shows with him. Like, and just seeing his progression has been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I think he got it like a little bit unlucky in the, the Gen fight down in Melbourne there. Yeah. But like um, but like man, like he's up, he's up there on, uh, on the bench, best in the country at that weight division. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have said many times on this program that I'm a big fan of uh, Ibi. Uh, so maybe I won't go into it again because uh, it'll get weird. <laughs> I really like him. I really like watching him fight. As you say, I've enjoyed watching him develop. Um. He, he, like, because I watched his kind of first fight for PTJ mm. when he, he, he came over, I think, um, from uh, Lebanon. Um, I think he was a, a Lebanese Muay Thai champion. Um, and he came over and I saw his first fight with the headgear on. And, like, it wasn't too crash hot, like, to be impressed. Um, it was, like, very, very stylistically different to anything that he you see from him now and, and i remember watching and and the first fight with took was a really good example that this team match of where you're like oh shit this dude is getting way really fast mm. and like he's impressed me a lot he's fought a lot of high level ties in australia um and picked up some big wins and we'll call general win because it's what it was um and the way that uh, there's a lot I really like about Ibi, like from I've been on the same show as him a number of times and just listening to his kind of mentality and his approach, I like, like, Ibi just really doesn't give a fuck. And like, I love that in a fighter, like, and, and I mean that in, it sounds a bit like intangible, but like, that's a real thing. Like, I remember that when he fought Took the first time, like, Took was moving around all crafty and, and Ibi was not overawed. He walked him down, mm. um, really imposed himself. And, and that's what I think uh, since that point, that was a few years ago now, Ibi's kind of settled into a little bit of a, like a femur style. And what I liked about his fight with Jen Hong Tong back in December was he didn't, and he said this to me before the fight, he said, I have a, a technical style a lot of people, when they fight a high-end tie, they kind of abandon that style and they think the way, the path to victory is to kind of just walk them down and, and physically outdo them. And he's not going to do that. I believe in my skills enough to play the game with him. And that's what he did. They went kick for kick and he was catching and, and sweeping down. And, and like, I really like that 
that confidence. I like Ibi's confidence. Um, I think this is an interesting rematch because when he fought Took last time, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was Took's first fight since moving to Australia. And there's some talk that maybe he wasn't taking his training super seriously. And since then, he has started to work full-time at Sakpili Chai Muay Thai um, and has been looked good. Um, he fought uh, at our boy, Jared Molo, on 1774 and, and looked deadly. And he fought um, Zelensky. Mm-hmm. On sound to sneer. and you could see, uh, not to discredit usual win over took that took was had his foot on the gas a little bit more, he, he switched on a bit. So, I think this is a, a very compelling rematch mm-hmm. because I think took's fired up. I think he's fired up. I think he came here like, you know, I'm just gonna jump in there and, and have a go. And and if he kind of gave him, I think he got a bit of a reality check. From from a, a young hungry up and comer, um, and he had to be like, oh shit, I got to work for this, <laughs> um, and I think he's doing that now. I see clips of him trying; he's putting it in. He's, he's living the Muay Thai life now. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think I think regardless, it'll be more competitive. Can he really bridge that gap and beat Ibi this time around? Let's see. But that's it. Like, um, it's like you can just even see, like, from those fights that, like, Took's body in general looks a lot better. It looks like, yeah, yeah, he's- yeah it looks jacked. Yeah, it's like <laughs> fucking bricked up. <laughs> Love it. But, like, yeah, but, like, also just in that time frame, both of them, like, you know, took, like, getting conditioned better, like, taking his training mm. seriously from there. But also in that time, Ibi's, like, you know, just been leveling up as well. So it makes a really, yeah. in- uh, like, a really compelling fight to make. It's a good, it's a good. Yeah, fight. and it's, it's like that. Comparisons like, yeah, Took maybe wasn't super switched, switched on before and now he is, but Ibi's a different fighter too. Um, so it's still a mountain to climb. I think if you put odds on this fight, I'd favor Ibi. I think that would be the logical odds on favor. I mean, like, because he beat him before, but the form that he's in, he's not scared of fighting ties. He's fought some good ones. And, and also, Ibi, for a guy who has a technical style, he can fight. You know, like um, he's had to battle back. He's had to put on some comebacks, um, like against Q down hardcore. So, yeah, he's not scared. He's not scared of a dog if he, if he has to go there. We've seen that a number of times. He's he's a quite fiery, quite a fiery, mm. uh, you know, sort of in ring guy. So, um, yeah, it will be uh, a good. It will be a good. Battle. Um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, definitely gonna be a great fights. All right, so looking down from there, a couple of other fights we'll go, go over. Uh, let's see what else is on this card here. Like, so, uh, oh, it's good that um, Justin and Shin and Miyaki yeah. had to actually do their fight <laughs> this time around. <laughs> no, no, it's off again. Oh, fuck, you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, that's it. Oh, I don't know what happened. I, I don't know what happened. I could be talking about mass, but um, mm. no, nah, I'm pretty sure I'm not talking about mass. Um, I'm pretty sure like there was a scheduling conflict or, or uh, like, I think it got booked and then, yeah, uh, okay. I think it was Justin that like couldn't make it happen for the rescheduled date. So it's off again. So. Oh, well, hopefully one of those boys will fight at some point or together or like against someone else, but oh, well, that's okay. Um, yeah. Did- that's an interesting one, right? Because we haven't really seen either of them. No, nah, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just get, get one of them in the ring. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's get some video on them, you know? Let's see what it's about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, let's see. Oh, I've got my, my guy on there, Kai. Uh, Kai. Um, hmm. Wee Jones versus uh, Moy Yu, Daniel Talker. This is a good fight, you know? It's a good fight. But, yeah. For the weight division, they're both kind of they're longer guys. Long guys, yeah. yeah. So it's like you know, in that aspect, it's um they're very, they're pretty uh pretty even. Uh, haven't seen a lot yeah. of Hawker, but like he's this one of those guys that rose up the ranks pretty quick in terms of like you know just oh no, just racking up the few fights on those like um like the Alan Bells and other kind of like stuff, and then just turned pro recently against Reese and had a great show yeah. as well. Yeah, good show, and I commentated that fight. Um. Daniel has a very interesting, an interesting type of walk forward style. Um, really likes to kind of just 
uh, how would I describe it? Like he's very good at kind of like pushing you back. Like he's got a, a, I would say like a, a, a technical pressure style, like some really nice initiates with some really nice long punches that once he keeps you on the end of, he's very good at walking over his work, like in a, in kind of a smothering way. So if he kind of throws the right hand, he can push a step back. He'll walk through with those knees, engage the clinch or them where you guys are strong in the clinch so he's got like a good style for just kind of like really cooking you if you sort of take a backwards step he won't long rain he'll smother and, and not let you take a breath good when things fill up in the clinch but quite a sharp kicker on the outside too keeps a pretty tough pace um to keep up yeah very challenging very challenging guy and as you say quite long for the weight um yeah yeah it should, it should be an interesting one like guys been training pretty hard it's like, it's been an interesting fight camp for him because like you know <laughs> most of those went away or they have like got stuck boxing but uh, but lewis was obliging enough to have him spar twice a week down his place with him and him and joe who's actually uh getting ready to fight uh carter lawrence and this is mm. been a pretty good camp overall like he's made some improvements and like yeah this this fight i'm, I'm really excited to see because the last couple of fights Kai had this yeah not great opponents and we but we all know that, but it just yeah it wasn't one of those ones where I go, like, I'm not going to put you on the shelf like just for that. We need to get ring time still because you, you haven't had many fights in general. Hey, look, like, you know, you're happy enough to call spade a spade as Kai's had walkovers. And he's had, like, he's had a number of walkovers in a row, right? Like, I'm not, whatever. I'll just say that. I don't care. Um, he's good, though. I know he's good. Um, I've worked a lot with him. Um, I'm quite fond of him. Um, but so I think like, you know, you start to get this idea. I think Kai is very much in that place where a lot of the crowd are quite excited about him. He's done some impressive things. Um, but anyone who's kind of a little bit more in the know, that question mark starts to come up where like, okay, but is he really good? Yeah. Um, you know, like Kai has beaten a number of people that uh, anyone could beat. Um, that's again, I won't, yeah, fuck it. I don't care. Yeah. Like, they're not challenging fights. He's looked really good in these fights. It's not his, he did his job. Um, they were the available opposition and he just took them out as you've got to. Um, like the last few, I think it's now, I like fights like this where the, I know Daniel Talker is really good. It's a good evenly matched battle of African comers. Let's see what Kai can do when he's pushed, when he's got someone that doesn't kind of relent to to phase one. Like let's let's work. Cause I know Kai's got gears. So let's let's see him in a fight where he's got to go and work through those gears and, and show some more layers. He'll learn a lot. Um, I'm interested to watch um you know what the the sparring and clinching with the SRG guys does for him because uh, I know he also, he's at a point uh, I think stylistically he's probably a, li a little ways ahead of most of the guys that he trains with so I think having guys like Joe to clinch with and stuff like that that truly Thai style will be really beneficial for him and, and he'll pick up some new tricks he, he trains hard um but sometimes you just need that. Like a lot of his training partners been boxing for this one so that that really tire, that kind of pressure cooker going, I think will be good for him. Um, but it's a good fight. It's uh it's a it's one of those, it's a it's a 50-50 match. Um two guys that, you know, maybe this is the first time of of this to me, it kind of a vibe to it. Um, both guys quite new on the professional scene. Um, and you don't know what guys are at that experience level. You don't really know what you're gonna see from them. They develop quick. Uh, I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a great one. Uh, let's see. A couple of other ones on here. So they, they, this one I feel like we were talking about before. It's an interesting matchup. So, you know, uh, Linton Walton from PTJ is like just yeah. kind of dug his feet in. It's like really back into the game now, coming uh, coming up that draw with uh, Bucky um, versus Andrew Flossy Webb, <laughs> which is like, it's like the matchup, it's just, it's random. Like it, it's a good match. Uh, Andrew Webb, like, was back in the scene a, a while ago, um, trained under Paul Grimer, and then moved. And that should tell you how long ago it was, right? Yeah, that's it. That's going way back. <laughs> yeah, 
I think there's a there's a video I didn't get to see it like him versus um Damien Larkin for 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 a title <laughs> that's on there like from nine years ah. ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um this is an interesting one for me because I I know of Andrew. You know I've chatted to him a little bit. He's a good dude. Um, but not that much as a fighter. Like I was still aware of him. I believe he's been training at a wooden man Muay Thai, Johnson Arms gym in, in Cal- California, somewhere in America, <laughs> California, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Reese made his, you know, and like we were talking about this before recently in COVID speak, um, made his professional debut, but was uh, an amateur in New South Wales like quite some time ago. So yeah, I think this is one of those kind of like question mark fights for a lot of the crowd. We all know Lyndon really well. Um, like he took a break. He came back. He fought Bucky. Everyone took a break. He fought Bucky again. So this is probably the first time in five years Lyndon's fought someone not named Jordan Bucky. Um, so it's interesting. Like we know Lyndon, Linden, we know what he brings to the table, but still, Lyndon's an interesting one in that he's picking speed back up from that long layoff that takes time and was disrupted by a lock. And then, to me, and I'm sure to many of the contemporary New South Wales, Andrew is a bit of a uh, an unknown, uh, and I think that will be a motivator for him to come into his hometown and. And or his home, you know, back to his home country and and showcase a little bit what he's been cooking up over in the States. Mm. Oh, sorry, dropped out of it. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's yeah, it's just a really interesting match. I I'd be interested to see, I I don't know how the story have like how this match came about from there, but like Yeah, I'd be interested. Cause I I think he only got in from the States, like not that long ago mm-hmm. like i don't think he's moved back his months ago or something like i'm pretty sure he just flew in like the other way <laughs> he's like, like well i'm here <laughs> if you find a match for me yeah you know? something like that like you know like it's not like he's been here back here for a year or something uh again like again like i shouldn't even say so, too much because like i know so little of this background mm-hmm. yeah no see like uh Got my last training in today at Wooden Man one day ago. So, like, it's even you yet. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I like that. I like it. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, yeah, like, the point I was making was he's, like, a fly-in for this fight. Like, he, he's not uh, relocated or, or anything like that. Um, yeah, he's coming back in from America to get back in front of his home crowd and – you know, Lyndon is an excitement machine. Um, you want to go and have an entertaining fight, match someone with Lyndon because he doesn't know how to step backwards. Uh, he's a bit of a lunatic. Uh, he's fit as. Yep. Yeah, just a, a real war fighter. He's had some of the best fights we've ever seen in New South Wales. Mm-hmm. That's it. Lyndon. Legendary yeah. wars. So, it's going to be a war. <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, I again, I don't think many of us know too much, at least recently, about Andrew, but like Linden fights aren't boring. So no. I think it'll be a good entertaining step. Yeah, nice. Definitely. Cool. And I think we'll probably do the re- they'll do the recap for the sign the city. There's a couple of others, but like I said, we're just going to kind of also just pick up more on the fights that we know and the kind of bigger name fights, uh, the bigger attraction fights from there. The rest of the card looks stellar, as well, no doubt. But, um, but yeah, remember. Yeah, it's a mad card. Yeah, like uh, we'll put the, the the link will be down below for tickets and there'll probably be a live stream as well. But hey, if you're in New South Wales and you're not affected by floods, <laughs> come on down to the SoCal Club, yeah. Ventures Forest. If you don't have COVID and you're not stuck because of a flood, so all seven of you um, come to SoCal Sydney in Ventures Forest uh, support. And when you buy the tickets, support Sydney Farm. Fuck it, guys. <laughs> put it in there now all right cool so um ah, so what we're just doing now is like yeah just a little bit of recap of what's been going on like that um what you want to do first you want to do you want to do the one championship fights yeah we'll do the one championship fights yeah we'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah like the whole the whole two let's do the ones 
All right, let's do the ones I didn't like and then the ones I liked. Okay. We'll finish on a high note, right? But <laughs> when we started recording, um, I just went on for like, sometimes Shane and I start doing the podcast and like I get too excited too early and I just fucking go nuts for like, it's like a warm up. I do a warm up before we actually start <laughs> recording. Um, and I was just talking about these one championship fights and like how much they fucking irked me. Uh, um, so let's, let's, uh, oh, oh, you want me to, uh, I've got the line up in front of me. We can run. Got it. Um, when I was watching these fights, I've watched them all now, but I watched the Liam Nolan fight. I think he was like the second fight in the whole card and I just fucking turned it off. And I've had experiences like this with one championship before um, where I'm just like, it's one of those. It's one of the, sometimes like, this is the thing. I am a one championship advocate. I, I some of the, the classic Muay Thai crowd don't like them. Um, and I understand where they're coming from. I've always been pro one. I love it. Would love to fight there. Um, love to own the opportunity. But from this standpoint, they fluctuate between on elite, elite, elite level Muay Thai fights and what the fuck is this fight is the only way yes. I could word this. Um, so, like, the first fight of the night, and this was kind of cool, they had twins this fighting. Um, Lin from China, uh, Milagros Lopez from Argentina. Admittedly, I, I just gave this fight a, a, a single skin through. I, I don't have too much to say about it. Um, I haven't watched it closely, so um, apologies for that. It's brought us to the second fight of the night. Again, uh, I feel like I shouldn't even have to use this disclaimer anymore. Um, I didn't watch any of the MMA. Um, actually, the MMA on this card, fair play, was all right. Like, Barbiano Fernandez versus John Lineker is a mad fight. Yeah. I, I just highlights. Know. Yeah. I think it only really was a highlight, right? <laughs> yeah, just like just John Lineker just throwing fucking bungalows <laughs> left, right, and center. Yeah, that's, that's like, I feel like to say something positive about championship MMA because. Uh, I rag on it, but credit where credit's due. Like this fight was about the MMA fights, and I didn't know about the other ones. But that's a that's a good ass fight. Barbiano Fernandez is one phantom weight. So, uh, he never really he doesn't get much of a shine because he never went the UFC route. Um, but he's bloody good and was beating good guys before like the UFC had a bantamweight division. He's kind of one of those guys. So he's coming to the end of it now. And then John Lineker is a dude who fought at a very high level in the UFC and probably could have hung around there. Mm. Um, but opted, you know, he wasn't on the best run when he left the UFC, but I think it was a contractual thing and probably a desire to not have to get weighed and, and continue <laughs> yeah. taking steroids. Like, <laughs> the weigh-ins like, weigh were the big issue, I reckon. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just, that's the funny thing as well about like this revolutionary new weigh-in system. Like you're John Lineker who couldn't make weight to save his whole life in the UFC somehow has no problems um, in like this really stringent one fighting out the same way. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. And probably, I don't know, he had his, his uh, issues with uh, the USADA as well. Um, but very, very entertaining fight and scored a sweet KO in that fight. So yep. there you go, MMA expert, yeah. Hugh O'Donnell checking in for the <laughs> also, run through. Uh, also, quick uh, shout out to Martin Nguyen getting back in the win winner's column for winning. Aussie okay. Kevin, good on him. Yeah. I, I, I always liked him back in there, but he's just a little bit on a skid, so it's good to see him back on a winning, winning path. Yeah. So uh, I got good things to say about MMA sometimes. sometimes. If it's good. But I'm not, I'm not going, <laughs> I'm not trying to do anybody a favor, but let me continue. Uh, all right. Liam Nolan won by a TKO in the first round against Kim Kun Lok. Now, I really, really like Liam Nolan. Like, I think he's mad. He fights out of the Nolsey Academy and they're very, they're one of the best uh, international Muay Thai gyms in the world. He's a stable mate of Jonathan Haggerty's, I think. Um, 
Uh, Knowles is a very impressive, very impressive trainer. Um, they have some stylistic similarities. Uh, Nolan and and Haggerty. Not I mean, like the commentator said they look like a carbon copy of each other. They don't. I think Liam Nolan moves very differently, but there are some like there are some similarities. They're both very very technical and very pretty to watch. Um, Liam for me this was interesting. Last time we spoke about him, he had just dethroned Yusuf Boganum. Um, who's soon to come to Australia and fight our friend David. Uh, but that was big, you know, um, Yusuf, an untouchable middleweight king. Uh, Liam had a very tidy performance against him and, and really showed his world championship level and has now come back to one championship. And like, we were talking about this before, I had never heard of this guy. I looked him up ahead of recording this. I couldn't find anything about him. Uh, it just felt like this was, I, it could have been a late replacement or something. You mentioned there might have been something like that. I never saw another fight announced before this one, but that could be me not paying attention. This was just a walkover fight. It was boring. Um, Liam just stomped out in front of, you know, he was just going to do whatever he wanted in, in this fight. I, I It's not worth analysing in detail. He just ran across the, the circle, threw a jump knee, and, and he had it straight away. There was there was absolutely nothing to it. Uh, he could have stopped this fight from, from the get-go. Yeah. And he did. It was just one of those fights where you... When they're making the entrances, you know, send the records, and they go, Liam Nolan's uh, Muay Thai record, blah, blah, blah. The other guys... Wushu Sander record, I go, oh, fuck this. As soon as I saw that, it just, it just, it just, it just, yeah, no way. Yeah. Stress. Yeah. And, and there were a couple, again, the reason this, this is not a criticism on anyone. Like Liam Nolan did his job and he got the 50K bonus, which I don't know if they get paid. Um, <laughs> but hopefully he got the 50K bonus. And, um, it's just like the, I am disappointed by this matchup because I like him and I want to watch him fight top guys. I enjoyed watching him fight. To me, to watch this guy fight Yusuf, beat him, and then come into this fight, it's like, I mean, maybe they're trying to build him, um, which is, yeah, not typically their style. Uh, if you look at some people's first time, I mean, it's not his first time in one, it's first time after a little bit of a break. Um, yeah, I, I just didn't quite get it i think for like uh you know the top promotion in the world it's just felt a bit like whatever i mean i'm I'm a i like a stoppage too i think it's it's easy to digest people like it they get excited but i really think you know what you're looking at that was just a was a sacrifice it wasn't a fight Mm. yeah just i don't know why they didn't make it they just didn't make sense but Oh well, it, it happened. So hopefully, we can just him in the ring next time. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's a little bit more credible opponent. And yeah, what interested me about this fight was the size of Liam Nolan. Like, he's a, I think his last fight's in one like seventy kilos. He just beat Yusuf at seventy two point five. Uh, he weighed in. This was a catch weight bout at like seventy nine, and he looked every bit of it. He was massive, massive. Yeah, and he didn't look soft walking in. No. I know I shredded to the absolute gills. So um let's see what he does weight wise. That's the that's it. life weight, which <laughs> is I mean the the names of the weight classes in one chip should make no sense to me. Like 77 kilos is lightweight. Like Regan Ursel is a lightweight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking massive. <laughs> Yeah, even like, you know, so Liam Nolan for the lightweight title. There's no Muay Thai champion in that weight class. So, um, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, like, you know, it's, I know there's one, one Aussie here that's trying to get a fight that will fight that high. You had the same idea as me. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I would love to watch the man I assume you're talking about is Charlie Bob fight Liam Nolan mm. in one championship at lightweight because, man, like, Okay, if that was a replacement fight, whatever. Um, I promise you, Charlie Bub would fight on like twenty minutes notice. Yeah, no you know what I mean. So, like, yeah, you've got to put on late notice fights. You don't always get who you want. But you've got Charlie clamoring, clamoring for the opportunity. I would love to watch Charlie Bub fight Liam Nolan at 
at lightweight. If that's the weight child he's doing, I don't know. I know he was calling for Richie Nestle and Nicky Holden, so I think that's that's the weight that he wants to do. So there you have it. You know I'm always happy to help with matchmaking. Chachi, do us. Do it. You know, you know what you know what the right decision is. Make it. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, keep going through. I suppose so that was that was what it was. Mm-hmm. It brings us to the same story again. <laughs> um, Amar Barlow. I was really happy to see Amar Barlow in one championship. She's been waiting two years for the opportunity, and and there's a lot of nonsense in the one women's division not not nonsense on one side just people saying i want to fight and no one will fight me and and we've seen this a bit with uh anissa mex and and uh janet todd you've got i don't know it's it's weird that you got fighters saying they've been offered the fight five times and they won't take it and then you can hear from uh the other side like you've never been offered this fight like we're happy to take it like and i don't know because even one themselves came out and said we really want to match and this other you know people won't fight her or whatever and and i was not going into it but this fight was uh marbo for um daniela lopez and sister and i'm not convinced not the same person <laughs> as um lopez because they look very similar yes um Really, really similar. As I mean, like twins do, I suppose identical twins do, I suppose. <laughs> um, but this is another one. Like Daniela's tough. She's a tough operator. She's based in Thailand. She's fought. I've seen her live before on Muay Hardcore, Muay Thai Super Champ. You know, one of those entertainment shows. She's got quite a resume, but not to the level of Amar Barlow and. In fairness, not many people do have a resume at the level of a Marbolo. She's a hard lady to match fairly. So I, I get that. Um, this wasn't as egregious as the other one, but I thought Arn fought in this fight like she knew she was not in it. Like she was just like getting it over with. Because she was quite like like she fought disdainfully like they tangled up and ended up on the floor a couple of times because her mom was just running through her mm. um and then eventually like uh daniella just took a step forward and mom leaned her head out and just threw this big upward right elbow right across the bridge of the nose landed it on the money and the cut stopped it in the first round of mom barely like a sweat yeah it just yeah she didn't give a fuck she just kind of flew across the ring like you know jumping into kicks and knees and like you know just putting everything into every elbow she was throwing there um, yeah and and i didn't even really think a man settled into she's a big quick kicker and she she we saw that kind of trademark right kick a couple of times and it landed sweet but i didn't think that looked like that was her priority one plan here i thought just she was much more pressure oriented and really trying to trying to just walk through and and make her presence felt with Daniela from the first second. They ended up in a couple of really ugly clinches just because her mom was just thinking all forward. Um, They would fall to the floor. and It wasn't like she really tried that that high pace kind of kick game, Um, but picked that elbow really nice. And again, 50K for her trouble, allegedly. So good on her. Good night in the office, that one. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, massive for a minute's work. It's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone like Amar that we've watched fight at this level for so many years, that'd be the biggest payday of her life. Um, and she deserves quite a lot. You know, like yeah, a, massively deserves it. Yeah. yeah, that's what it's. It's honestly, it's it's not even a lot to show for what she's done. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, I'm always happy. I want to see like the veteran, the veteran Muay Thai guys. Um, getting a 50k but i want to see like my mates get a 50k as well like i want charlie to go over there and get a 50k i want to see diandra get a 50k mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you know what i mean that's <laughs> you know like i want well, just it. because it's just as yeah just how it should be and that like you know i guess like that goes into the that next matchup where josh Tonner fought on uh against uh zhang from from china and that match and the kickboxing match yo how fucking scary is this zhang jesus christ 18 years old I don't. Know what, I didn't know that. That's what I didn't know until yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I watched it. Man, what, what are they like, feeding this like, kid? There's all these young cunts like him and like you know, yeah, Zhang, like Samilia. All these young people come out and go, man, Bro. what are they feeding them? <laughs> yeah, 
But I don't know. I actually thought Josh started quite nicely in this fight. Mm-hmm. Um, he landed some counter kicks well, and and he had some success with some step up knees, even when he was already in trouble. Um, at that distance, was taping well and landed some cool counters, like like evade and and countered across the back. But once Zane got his his lead hook going, mm. just trouble. Like you could see, he he cracked Josh to the body once quite early, and and you could see that. Josh is as tough as they come. Um, you could see a little bit of a change in his demeanor. Um, and and Zane, you could hear these these punches landing. Like that lead hook was money. Oh. And the second he got it once, he was really hungry for it. Um, Josh, Josh dropped the foot, dropped Josh, I think, for the first time towards the end of the first round, and he made the towel. Um, and then Josh had slowed down quite a lot coming out to that second round and and I think Zang felt it a bit like he could really go for it um yeah it was tough uh I get quite like if anyone's heard my episode with Josh like I I, uh, get quite personally invested in him like he's just like like I, I I know him um but before I knew him like like I'm a huge 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 Josh Tonner fan. Like I, I really, really like watching him fight. Um I think he's a hard dude not to just not to he's the kind of fighter that you just want to back. He's a, a fighter's fighter. Mm. Um and that's why I really wanted to see him win this one. But I admire Josh a lot. I look up to him a lot. Um I think he's great. This is a, a tough night in the office, of course, but only because he always fights the best. And like, you can't have anything but respect for someone who goes out there the way that Josh does. You know what I mean? Like, it's very easy to look at what someone can do at the very pinnacle of the sport when you're not there and say what you want to say. Josh steps up against the very best fighters in the world repeatedly. And it's it's a take a risk at that level. Um, be interested to see what's next, but I'm interested to see what's next for Zang too, because Josh, we know he's no pushover, and hmm. that was a very impressive performance. Yeah, um, Zhang is interesting to like to see because like he's from China, and like you got an hmm. idea what Chinese fighters are like a lot of times in terms of like you know they usually have like that sander background, so the, like you know like sidekick to the face kind of style. But hmm. Zhang actually look like that classic kind of K1 Japanese style. Yeah, I did think that too. Quite high volume. Um, um, a lot of kind of lead lead side sort of dexterity. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was interesting to watch. I, I was very impressed, very very impressed. Once yeah. he got going, it was kind of scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll see how he goes the rest of the time. But he's going to be definitely a force to reckon with. Yeah, definitely could be a guy to look at as a, a future champion. So mm-hmm. let's see. Yes, was there much else on that? I, I think there's on the the kickboxing Muay Thai side. It's just uh, Ishmael Lont versus Iraj as his core. Oh, yeah. um, just pretty typical sort of Ishmael was was good. Mm. Uh, I ain't seen him in a while, but he's had some big fights. Um, yeah, he got knocked out. Out of that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, not not heaps to report on that. A bit of a scrap. That's how it goes. Oh, well, I guess that just for the one bit of it. <laughs> yeah. Overall, um, a C. <laughs> C. I think C is a fair yeah. rating. Yeah. So you, you can do better, and they are going to have a good show coming up pretty soon, though. As well. I feel like what I'm getting from one now is like sometimes the show is for they all tend to have multiple styles, but sometimes it's for the Muay Thai guys, mm. and sometimes it's for the MMA guys. And I think this was for the MMA guys. Yeah, it's in that way. You know, like it wasn't. Uh, I mean, outside of the Josh fight, there wasn't like a ton of com- super compelling Muay Thai. It was just like there. Mm-hmm. It was name building fights. It wasn't like real fights. No fights. Yeah, that's right. It's just fights just to make fights. Mm-hmm. But like um, one of the fights that's coming up that interests me, like Nongo versus Felipe Lobo. That's good, a- good, good, good fight. I- yeah. It's like- Nongo has shown time and time again that he's not past fighting the young mm. up and comers, right? Lobo is going to be a tough ask. Um, but fuck, like. Who's given Nongo any trouble the last couple of years in one? Not really, yeah, any trouble at all. He's like, he's kind of, it's like he's just that fight computer, just kind of figures you out. Massively. And then- Felipe is good. He beat your Panam wrong. Um, very, very physically strong. Um, 
a, a super athlete, um, has fought a, been based in Thailand for some time, but Nong owes about as much of an ask as you can get. Mm. Yeah, but it's like a compelling fight to make. It's a good, it's a good fight to make as well. It's a right good fight. fight. Yeah, it's a good fight. Yeah, cool. All right, let's see what else can we talk about from there. No. Oh, actually, Do you want to run, run through the uh, the fights in Song Cloud on Friday night? Uh, yeah. Do a quick. Spin. Yeah, I didn't catch those ones, but uh, let me. Uh, I got them in front of me. Yeah. I, yeah. I can. Uh, yeah. I- a couple of big, I won't run through everything. There was about 17 fights in there, but there was a big lineup here and, and a couple of good stories. I, I won't, these are all posted individually on Sound Fight News. I, I, these to me were the best fights. Mm. Um, I mean, I just told you I hated one. So to say that they were the best fights out of those two cards is maybe not saying that much, but this was like, I, I watched these like all in succession. They were a really good lineup worth watching. Um, Sex on. I was positive he had retired and I thought he was going to Ireland to fight, um, I, which like is again, like a post-retirement thing, but he, he fought on here against um, Petch March on Jim Wang Non, who's been in quite a good form, like had a really good battle with um, Yod Leg Pet for the Omnoi title not that long ago, like a good kind of uh, back and forth. Stouse dropped Yod Leg Pet a couple of times. In that fight, um, Sexan had lost seven in a row coming into this one and, and broke the losing streak. So Ooh. that's cool to see. And it was very, ent- it was entertaining in a Sexan kind of way. Like Sexan fights almost exactly the same in every fight, but a good back and forth battle that Sexan just pulled away with towards the end like took some took some shots for his trouble as he will but i like sex on mm. um i don't always to be honest especially now i don't love watching him fight it's not like particularly nice to watch in a lot of ways but like it's it's fun you know he's got this like it was more fun back in the day i think it's it's a style that doesn't age very well but yeah, a, a great battle at a ridiculous pace. And and I'm happy to see Sexon go back in the wing column. Um, enjoyed it. Yeah, see, honestly, I won't break these down too much. It's not my recommended viewing for the week. <laughs> like, you can find them all on Sound Fight News, individually or as the whole event. I recommend it. It was really good. Like, outdoor kind of festival show was sick. Um, this is a fun one. Um, Sivakorn Kicharan Chai. Uh, who I believe, regardless of that last name, is at PK Sanjay. No, he's still at PK Sanjay. Um, I've trained with him quite a bit, actually. I did a lot of clinching with him. He's very strong. Mm. He's one of the the kind of... I, I don't know if by like a Bangkok gym standard, you'd call him like the up-and-comer because he's in the swing of fighting at the stadium level and, and he fought Petrotong or Kwan Wang, who he beat earlier in the year as well beat him again here i love petutong petutong um uh, or kwan wang i'll specify because there's a few petutongs knocking around but it seems like he's a little bit maybe lazy like he's clearly not in the same kind of shape as civil corn he's technically absolutely beautiful but the physicality of civil corn seems to get the better of him like the way that Petru Tong can fight off the back foot and his countering ability and can kind of control the points is amazing. But Cyril Korn, who is a high-level guy in his own right and is just physically so much, uh, he's bigger, he looks stronger, like he could kind of just impose himself. Like Petru Tong gave him trouble. It was quite similar both fights. Like when Petru Tong's working, he's class, but he's just not getting out of second gear. When they would clinch up, Siwakon would really just make these big statements, like would just lock down Pet Yutong and, and really hold him and, and just kind of put him in place where he couldn't move him to the point where he was just waiting for a little bit of a break. Like he just would smother the... When they would really go... Like Pet Yutong did some great work, but when they'd go toe-to-toe, especially if, if he could lock him down in the clinch, there was just really nothing Pet Yutong was going to do. So um, good fight, like uh, uh, a good example of kind of just sticking to your guns and shutting down that classy femur style so that's win for silver corn keep an eye on him if you're not as familiar he's probably of all these names we're going to touch on more in that up and comer kind of bucket so a, a good one to watch 
Um, Ghana, PK Zinja Muitaji uh, versus your leg pet. They still fought. Couldn't even guess how many times. They fought not that long ago. They fought a lot. They're sort of rivals. But I think Ghana maybe. I love Ghana. He's like one of my favourites. Uh, I say that a lot. I have a lot of favourites. Uh, I really like Ghana. Um, very classy, very um, technical clinch and sweep oriented fighter. That's kind of the difference maker for him. Um, he tends to beat your leg pet, the little nugget with the giant legs. It's about two feet tall, big <laughs> hands and low kick fighter. But this time around, it was a draw, uh, which is interesting. I think Gana has sort of looked like he's slowing down a little bit the last couple of years. And, and by Thai standards, I think he's quite old. I think he's 34. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, which is... Uh, compared to some of his stable mates will be getting it's getting to the veteran end yes. um if you know sort of stadium level we tie i think this is a fight where Ghana did a lot of the things that we know him for he was very good in the clinch he was tricky he was counting very well but your leg pet was able to kind of work through and kind of break that barrier and and tagged him a couple of times with some big punches and and just kept that where Ghana's, you know um strength is his ability to play the game uh, your leg pet could keep snatching it back keep snatching it back um just by doing that not as beautiful as gana does it but just snatch it back with that visible damage and and push it back to a draw so i'm sure we'll see this to do it again for the fifteen thousandth time i liked it um i really like your big pet i liked it i like his intensity um I think it's fun to watch that stylistic contrast of the artistic technician versus the, you know, relentless kind of brawler. Um, your leg pair has some wicked KOs and, and was throwing heavy leather in this fight. Um, good to watch. Very compelling. It was that kind of draw where one pulls ahead and your leg pet was just kind of catching up the whole way through and, and keeping the score even, but couldn't quite pull ahead to get the victory or probably needed like an eight count or something. Um, but Ghana are good at playing the smart game and didn't take the win, but didn't, didn't give it away either. <laughs> uh, main event, this one I really liked. Uh, Sangman Esau Cafe Muita. Mm. Um, okay, I'll give you a little bit of background. He fought Kong Klai Ani Muita. And Kong Klai has been on an absolute wrecking mission. He's the first man to ever KO Sexan, and that's not easy. Uh, KO'd him stiff um, has been knocking out everyone uh, and and kind of now in that transitionary period where he will show up on like you know tie fight and these more international shows too he's a massive power fighter a huge knockout um, like one of the mm, one of the most prolific knockout fighters that's kind of uh, on the scene at the moment and also a heavy, heavy, heavy favourite um, down in southern Thailand. It's where he's based. So as we say, like he's having some big fights um, on the stadium scene. As I mentioned, he knocked out um, Saksana Rajadam Nern. Um, he's been Rajan Singh, uh, beaten Taksila, beaten um, Mardet. Uh, this that probably won't, you know, if you don't follow the Thai scene and one I mean as much. These are all big wins, and he tends to win by. KO, like I think at one point he had like eight knockout wins in a row in the major stadiums. He won the um, Omnoy Stadium Isuzu Cup at 140 pounds every fight by knockout. And scary in that he wins by knockout with everything. Like he's won by knockout body kick, knockout elbow, loves his hands. And then to kind of flip the to the other side of the ring for where he's at, he won like a lot of fights in a row, has started, as we say, to graduate to fighting internationals on shows like Thai Fight as well. So getting that kind of rounding out of that experience, looking pretty much unstoppable. He fought Sang Mani, Saw Cafe Muay Thai or Saw Tiempo or whatever you know him as, who is an interesting one. I think he had lost seven out of eight fights. Like he'd lost a lot. Um, we didn't see him win a lot. He'd lost at least four in a row too. Um, had been like, like of that stretch included that really bad knockout loss to Q-Love Dam in one championship. So this to me, as someone who's on the outside and can't follow the tie scene that closely, felt like a bit of a funny match. Like 
I don't get why you got this one dude that's on a colossal losing streak versus one dude who's knocking everybody out and he matched them together. But maybe it was a bit of that building thing, um, you know, trying to really let Conkai cement him. Because so, same when he's still fighting at the highest possible level, he's just not having good results. Like he just was coming off a loss to Ferrari at Channel 7 where he looked quite undersized. But same when he looked classy, absolute class, got the win, but... This was what interested me about this fight is I thought the game for Sang Mani here was to kind of step back and play a very technical kind of femur, which he's been known to. He, he's been in a number of wars, but he's good at playing that technical step back game. That's what, and like kind of just his, his, uh, I don't even know what you call that. That real artsy kind of style is what made him the million dollar baby. Uh, when he was young, like he started to get these big purses. He was a big fan favorite. I thought he was going to step back and try to warn off Kong Clyde, but he went after him, <laughs> heard him a number of times, waded right into the fire, tagged him in the elbow and was still visibly damaging Kong Clyde, like into the fifth round. Like he never played it off either. Um, massive win. And fuck, like, that's why I like Muay Thai, especially Thailand Muay Thai. You never know what. Mm. That didn't even make any sense. The style of it didn't make sense. But saying that he has moved, I think, full time to PK Centro. Right. And that could make a difference because he's been a bit of a nomad, like just representing sponsors and going here, there, and everywhere just to spar and train. So, yeah, interesting and, and cool. I, I liked it. Saying that he'd been one of my favorites back in the day. I, I didn't like to see him go on this poor run of form. So, let's see what's next. That's a, a massive, massive win that just shoots Saying Mani right back up there. Mm. Yeah, it's like maybe just that change of camp and someone booting him up the ass, the trains. I think it could be that. I think it could be that. So let's see. He's, I'm sure still under contract with one championship. Maybe he goes back there. I, I I was excited by this one. It was a great fight. Again, like I, I don't run through the Thailand stuff too much because it's so hard to follow on here. But if you like Muay Thai, it's all free to watch on Sound Fight News. I really, really recommend you have a look at all the fights just mentioned. Uh, they were sick. Mm. Nice. Good times. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to catch up with the same me fight. Nah, yeah, it. I recommend it. It was really, really good. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Uh, let's see what we go. Yeah. Right, I think with that, no, almost at the end here, but I'll just go quickly over like um did some boxing last night and my thoughts on that. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot we didn't talk about this uh with the recording on. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But like yeah, I had two boys uh doing the boxing uh on neutral corner promotions, great promotions. Uh Paul's a great promoter as well, I have a good rapport with him. Um, so we had Dakota and the amateurs. Um, first, first uh, boxing fight. He's only had like one uh, amateur Muay Thai fight there, and uh, he was looking pretty good. Like he's doing everything right. For, it's like you know, I've, the guy was a bit taller, a bit rangier, but he was mm. on the outside, but darting in, scoring well with overhand into the body and that. And same thing in the second round. Got clipped with a couple of punches. Though. Like there was one punch where like I, I thought he, I thought he literally just slipped. Like he just got punched, and then he, but he mm. took, took a knee. But then he's like, oh my nose, he's like a little bit fucked. And then got up and I think just to protect his nose and not get that punch again, he's he just leaning his head a bit more forward and just got clipped like just, just behind the ear. I saw the shot and then ah, it was just equally when it was off and like the ref waved it off and I, I already had my towel in the hand. I was like, yeah, okay. it, was, it was the right call. But it just sucked to see because it, it was just going uh, so well up until that point. But even in that amateur boxing, even with the big gloves and on, yeah, it can still happen. You can still get rocked it's up. Game, I guess, yeah. Yeah, but like he'll be better for it and work out well. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, also had Luke at the pros uh, for pro debut in boxing. Um, I only did like one amateur boxing beforehand, um, which he lost. Uh, but like the opportunity came up because I knew like uh, getting match on the, the show on March probably wasn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. So let's go. Oh well, I'll just put your name down. So you didn't pull up another guy that's had like about I think. I feel well, I was told anyway, like five to six amateur boxing fights from there. And I was going, well, that's pretty similar to your Muay Thai experience. So yeah, just go and have a crack. Um, man, I tell you what though, boxing shows are just different. Eh? The vibes yeah. are different. It's just I, I it's like I kind of like it was talking, we're we we're talking before the pot uh the recording. It's like I don't even know if I like the vibe itself. It's just I don't know, just didn't see like even in the amateur car, there was a fight broke out. Like in the yeah, crowd. yeah, <laughs> that kind of stuff. I go, um, uh, pro boxing does there was auctions, and so I go, oh, that's why people do auctions. I, I totally forgot they did that. I hate it, eh? 
um the best one was though like you know we're warming up the back and some guy comes up and tells us goes hey man you just like probably should stop stop warming up I go oh why because oh, i didn't even tell you because after this fight um paul fennick from fat pizza's coming down to do a skit for half an hour before before your fight okay what it's like what? yeah what like- is this shit okay um Paul Finner comes down, does his thing. It wasn't even a skit. He just came in by himself, like all his leather shit. Um, didn't have a camera crew or anything, but it ended up being him just doing shitty stand-up for about 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, it sounds tragic, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I didn't even know if it was like true stand-up. It was more like crowd work, but like it just wasn't good. It was just land and flat. Yeah. <laughs> it good. But, um, and uh, also I thought we didn't talk about recording as well. Like, like um, an hour prior for that, the fight was going to get called off as well with Luke because uh, old mate uh, brought a CS, a blue book that was dated 2011. <laughs> and like, and then promoter goes, Oh, I think we can get a sword, but the, the dude, he's, he's, ha- he's lying down having panic attacks as well. <laughs> the <guy he's> <laughs> I'm going, what, what are you? He's like, no, did you leave with, with me? Okay. And then comes back. No, no, no less than two minutes later, he goes, all right, we sort of we're good. We're good to go. All right. I'm, I'm sorry I told you anyway, but yeah. Shit, shit was great treatment. Out. Yeah, great treatment. <laughs> uh, they figured it out quick. <laughs> yeah. It was literally like two minutes before like, uh, oh, the fight might be called off. And I go, we just go, we're just, we're just going to pretend this fight's still on. Just keep warming up. <laughs> <laughs> Until like it, it, got, it got fixed over. But yeah. Um, other than that, though, Luke did well. Um, got a TKO victory in the end. The other dude, I'd give it to him. The other dude is fucking tough as nails. Absolutely tough as nails. Um, but Luke, after the first round, Luke was getting pinged a bit. Like, uh, he's just shorter dude. Jump, just leaping into a lot of shots. And just did that little adjustment plan of like, stand your ground, keep your head low, and aim at his chest. And kind of started picking up slowly after uh, the next couple of rounds after that. Yeah. So it's good. But um, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm forward to looking, go, going back to Muay Thai fighters on the, as the next event on a calendar. So, yeah. <laughs> especially with besides a uh, good show, Simon Sydney. Yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of cool people at boxing shows. Like we've had a disrupted view of it, I guess. But yeah, I seen some weird shit. Yeah, I see. Well, like, I always catch, it's always good. Like, you know, Huss was there. So I caught up with him. Yeah. Um, he's a really good dude. Yeah, he's a good oh, dude. Yeah. It's the good question up with him, but yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Is there any more boxing in the future? I'm not too sure. I don't know if I can really be bothered actually after that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I guess you're kind of just driven by what the fighters want to do, yeah, uh, in awesome. that sense. But that's yeah, they want to do, but hey, that's all good. All right, um, but other than that, I've, I think we're done. I think that should do it for this week. That's all I got, yeah, man. Look, we, we did one of our classic talk shit episodes again, yes, in the bank. That's what I do best. <laughs> they're fun ones hmm. all right guys so just remember uh check in the show notes from there tickets to the show if you can make it no, there, there will most likely be a live stream as well i don't know who'd be commentating that one I mean that you're doing- I know. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> is that a secret or uh, yeah well, well i'm it- pretty sure it's uh it's mr rebellion oh yeah okay cool awesome yeah, that's even better <laughs> get that, get, that's oh, like- oh, hold on even better than what Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should sleep with the tongue there. <laughs> I thought it was going to be one like, um, you know, we've been to shows before where, like, you know, just trainers just jump in for like two fights again. Then I got to warm up my guy. And so it's like, pew, 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 pew. yeah, no, nah, I could be wrong, but I, uh, I think I saw Sai on Facebook asking for food in commentary positions. Awesome. That's yeah, a good one. Ah, right, cool. Um, but yeah, continue on. Remember, follow us on Instagram. Facebook, go like our stuff. Even on, on Spotify, you can you can you can uh, like us and um and rate us. So do that, please. <laughs> Is that new? Yeah, that's a new feature. It's like it's yeah, do that. Okay. I didn't know you could do that, but you should. Yeah, so I'm gonna jump on my phone now and do it myself. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> right. But other than that, guys, we'll, uh, we we probably won't catch you next week. We'll probably catch you the week after. Okay. <laughs> See you then. Peace. <laughs>